Let me tell you a fascinating story of servant of God Francis Xavier Crude. A great visionary and Indian missionary, founder of the congregation of Sisters of Our Lady of Fatima. He was born on 7th December 1854 at Zwolle in Holland as the youngest and the eighth child to his parents, Henry Crute and Joanne Schroers. The constant prayers of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Crute was, Lord, may any one of our sons be a priest to serve you. And one extra decade of the rosary was practiced during family prayer for this secret intention, that one of their children would receive vocation to priesthood. As a result, the three of their five sons became priests. Bartholomew Crute, S.J., in African Mission, Anthony Crute, a Mill Hill Indian missionary, and Francis Crute, the youngest followed his brother Anthony Crute. Two of his sisters, Adriana Maria and Anne Catherine Maria, died in infancy, while the third, Joanne Maria, expired unmarried at the age of 25. Godfrey and John stayed at home to look after the family and the shoe manufacturing business. Francis Crute joined the minor seminary at Kullenberg in April 1869 and later to Mill Hill, London for missionary life. During his holidays, while three boys were in the seminary, they lost their beloved father in 1870. In 1873, on July 2nd, while Francis was on his home leave and as he was about to join back the seminary, his mother breathed her last. After his ordination, on 9th June 1878, Father Francis followed his brother Anthony to India, fulfilling the wish of their dying mother that the two brothers work together. On 8th August 1878, Francis Crute, after a long voyage, landed at Madras seaport. Barely 24 years of age, Father Francis was appointed as the assistant parish priest of St. Mary's Cathedral. Armenian Street, Madras. He mastered Tamil and worked as chaplain at Poonamalli for two years. Being one with the people, he began to think of a congregation of Indian sisters early 1882. And he thought to himself, Oh, could I build a nice convent here? It has been my all-absorbing thought ever since I came here. He worked in other different mission stations in India in different capacities, such as assistant parish priest at Punamalli in Madras, provincial of Mill Hill Missionary Society, assistant to his brother, Anthony Crute, at Ravi Padu, Guntur district in Andhra Pradesh, vice provincial, rector and professor at St. Joseph's Seminary at Nellur and Karnul, chaplain of Fort St. George in Madras, and editor of an English weekly, The Catholic Watchman, presently known as The New Leader. He was transferred to Bellari as the military chaplain and reached Bellari on 9th September 1882. Bellari This was not the picture of Bellari, 124 years ago. It was known for lonely, dry and rocky land. Of course, crowned by the magnificent Tipu Sultan Fort. Before the First World War, Bellari was an important British military station with barracks and offices for the troops in the cantonment area. 
When the troops left, the building remained. One of the old military church dedicated to the Assumption of Our Lady is a well-kept spacious building. And another station, Kaul Bazaar. In September 1883, Father Francis Crute was appointed as overall in charge of 3,000 Catholics in Bellari, including St. Lazarus Church at Kaul Bazaar in Bellari. The church was built by Father Patrick Doyle and it is the present St. Anthony's Cathedral in Bellari. Father Francis Xavier Crute encountered many spiritual, social and moral problems in his pastoral efforts in Bellari. During his pastoral ministry and in silent prayer, he realized the importance of education for all, especially education of women and girls to change their status and to build up sound Christian families, for there was a rampant immorality and prostitution in the locality where women were given a very low status in society. On 1st June in 1886, Father Francis was appointed as the provincial of the MHMs in Madras Vicariate. 1891, he stepped down as vice-provincial. While away from Bellari, he continued to prepare the soil for the seed. It was Archbishop Joseph Colgan of Madras who had the destiny of the congregation in his hands. The Archbishop gave formal permission to the request of Father Francis Xavier Crute to start the new Indian congregation of the Missionary Sisters of St. Francis Xavier in Bellari in 1892. Thus, Father Francis Xavier Crute's dream came true on 8 February 1893, when three sisters, Sister Mary Andrew, Sister Mary Anna and Sister Mary Claire, said yes to the will of God. These sisters were kept under the care of Good Shepherd Sisters in Bellari on request by Archbishop Joseph Colgan. 29th June 1896 marked a memorable day in the history of the Indian Sisters when they were formally led to their own home, St. Francis Xavier Convent, Bellari, at Kaul Bazaar. From then on, the Sisters of St. Francis Xavier began the work of education of the Indian children of Bellari. Unfortunately, Father Francis Crute had only a rare glimpse of the infant congregation as he was forced to leave India for better treatment due to his fragile health. The untimely death of Father Francis Crute left the sisters orphaned. Unfortunately, the sisters did not have any records or information about the founder for 80 long years. Daring to take leap into the unknown, the sisters faced upheavals from all quarters. Hoping against all hope for a better prospect, Mother Stanislaus, a great visionary, the then Superior General in the 1950s took a daring step to shift the congregation of the Missionary Sisters of St. Francis Xavier from Bellari to Pune with the permission of Bishop John Hogan of Bellari and Bishop Andrew D'Souza of Pune. In 1951, on 16th July, a new chapter opened in the congregation. As Bishop Andrew D'Souza of Pune rechristened the congregation from the Missionary Sisters of St. Francis Xavier to Sisters of Our Lady of Fatima, 
the generalate and the novitiate of the congregation are located in Pune. This change greatly enhanced the development and progress of the congregation. But the information about our founder remained unknown to the sisters. It was Mother Hilda, the then Superior General, who discovered the name and picture of the founder father, Monsignor Father Francis Xavier Crute, in the late 70s. As a result, in 1985, Sister Stefna was commissioned to study about our founder. Sister Tekla, during her studies in Manila, at the EAPI, met Father Binham. I met Father David Bingham, a Mill Hill missionary. When I went to him and said, Father David, our founder, is also a Mill Hill missionary by name Francis Xavier Kroot. He was so excited. I too was very happy because we had very little information about our founder. Then I wrote to Sister Arcangela, Sister, I have a classmate, a Mill Hill father who has come from Sarawak as a missionary. And I wrote to the Superior General asking him to find out some information about the family and other details of our founder. Then at once she replied, please tell father to get some information about our founder from their archives. And he was very happy. He said, certainly, sister, when I go back to England. And as he promised, he did. So it so happened, Father Jimbo Siamacham had come to Ishwani Kendra to give a retreat. Sister Sandan was there. And he asked her about Fatima sisters, are you one of them? Then she said yes. So he agreed to go to Holland as he was going for his vacation. And he saw that contacted with many people in Holland. At last he found Sister Dini Kru, Mrs. Dini Kru, one of his relations, far distant relations. And through her, we came to know many things. And then he published this in one of their magazines, Mill Hill Missionary. And Father Jim Bost, who happened to be in India, working in India, read this. And he was very excited. And he came uh, to the generalate. From there, we began the research on our holy founder, Father Francis Xavier Kroot. Father Jim Bost he is popularly known among the Fatima sisters as the finder of the founder of our congregation. The congregation was canonically erected as the diocesan congregation as a mother house in Pune on 15th December 1970 with the support of His Excellency William Gomes, the Bishop of Pune. The decree of praise was obtained on 18th March 1982 with the help and encouragement of Bishop Valerian de Souza. In 1988, Fatima sisters procured the mortal remains of Francis Crout from the cemetery at Hyrus in France, and now it is kept in the chapel of the Fatima sisters' generalate in Pune. For the better administration of the congregation, two regions were formed on 1st June 1996. From June 2002, the regions were made into provinces as Mumbai province and Bangalore province. And a separate unit was added in the northeast as the northeast region. A core committee was formed as per the decision of the 10th General Chapter for the canonization cause of our founder. The committee met nine times from 2015 onwards. Bishop Henry D'Souza of Bellari took keen personal interest and did all the necessary procedures to initiate the beatification, 
and canonization work of our founder. Father Francis Crout, MHM, a great Indian visionary and missionary who founded the indigenous religious congregation, went unnoticed, unknown among the Indian missionaries in the history of the Catholic Church for a long time due to lack of records. <laughs>